gonna set my timer so that I know how long 30 minutes is. 20, let's go 28. All right, hello everyone. Um, so, I hope, what's up TFC community? I hope everyone's having a great day, staying positive, using your time wisely, helping others and your friends, you know, your friends and your family um, cope through these very weird times. They are weird times, they're weird for everyone. Um, you know, I think, Kindness is the secret sauce right now. And just like fear can be really socially contagious, I think kindness and being helpful can also be really contagious. Um, you know, if that means just call up your grandparents, send them some love, they need it right now. It's a scary time if you're an older person or if you're immune compromised. So if you know anyone that fits into those categories, send them some love. It'll make you feel just as good as it makes them feel. Um, and just kind of as a side note, so I'm gonna put this on YouTube. Um, I'm gonna look at this camera, but after when we get in the q and I'll check out, um, I'll kind of pay attention to the phone, but it's hard to look at both at the same time. Um, and as a side note, if during these times where you're having to be at home or indoors, um, if you're looking for an outlet for quality information when it comes to health, TFC has a free app that's available. So it's called TFC App. Um, and it's loaded with tons of videos, blogs, podcasts, recipes, and even book recommendations. So, you know, the, the goal with the app was essentially to create a curated set of information where all of our foot nerds from around the world essentially find the information that they found really helpful from really smart people and put it in an app so that it's a less chaotic um, space, right? When you go into YouTube and you go down the rabbit hole of trying to find health information, shit can get a bit crazy, right? There's a lot of information out there. Um, most of it is not the greatest. Um, some of it is good, but it can be hard to find. So we basically tried to go in there and find the best shit that we could and put it in the app and it's free for everyone. Um, and it'll always be free. And if we can, our mission is gonna be to never ever do anything to sell people's data or, um, you know, we wanna, you know, right now it's free. It doesn't make us any money, which will be a problem eventually because it's a lot of resources to create and run an app. but. We'll figure it out and uh, you know, we're only gonna monetize it when we can do it ethically and we'll be fully transparent with people when that time comes. So um, in the app, there's also a Q&A feature where if you have a question, personal question, um, general question, you can ask it in there. Someone from the Foot Nerd Tribe will go in and answer it as best they can. And you can also view over 75 questions that we've already answered uh, for people who have submitted them because I think the same question gets asked to us quite a few times and um, when we answer the question, we try and tag it with some topic tags and make it available for everyone to view. So we've got a small team. We're working on the app every week. Right now it's available for iOS and a web-based version. And you can go to the footcollective.app and you can download it there. You can ask us a question. You can check out all the content. And we will have an Android version ready eventually, but right now, small team, not very much resources. We're working on it and eventually we'll, we'll, we'll get that out. So. Let's get into it. So today's topic is all about how to overcome uh, anxiety in scary, uncertain, and very anxiety provoking times. And I think the first thing to say is that if you're feeling anxious right now, you're normal. Um, I'm certainly anxious and feel uneasy with the current situation. And you know, today I really wanted to share some of the things that I found really helpful uh, in controlling my mind and keeping calm and happy during um, some of the chaos that happens in the world. So that's really what it's all about, is just sharing what I've learned and what I've researched and strategies that I've used um, to overcome anxiety. Because it's something that will come up in everyone's lives and how you make manage it is really what determines whether it's a burden or if it's just part of your process of growing as a human. So what we're going to talk about, um, we are going to talk about number one, what is anxiety? So we'll define it, give it a little bit of, um, kind of just unpack it a little bit because I think by understand, understanding something better, at least for me, when I understand something better, it automatically is less worrisome to me. Right, if you understand the basics of how a car works, when you hear some weird noise or see lights going off, you're not gonna be as alarmed and creating weird scenarios of, oh my God, it's gonna cost so much money or my car could fall apart. If you have a basic understanding, it's less worrisome and it creates more certainty, which is what the brain wants. Um, so what is anxiety? We're gonna talk about building a resilient mind. 
Okay, sometimes I talk really fast. I'm gonna try and talk slower, but I also wanna cover everything before the Q&A, so I'll do my best. Um, building a resilient mind, we're gonna talk about that. We'll talk about protecting yourself from social contagion and identifying and protecting yourself from anxiety triggers, because I think that can be helpful. And then we're gonna talk about or, um, anchors to get you back into the body and out of your mind. So when we get stuck in the mind, the chaos can, can erupt with anxiety or worries. Um, but sometimes by getting back into the body in the present moment can really be a powerful antidote. So, um, yes, we're gonna, someone's, I gotta stop looking at these questions because it distracts me, but yes, there is a difference between anxiety and fear and that's exactly what we're gonna talk about next. Uh, and then we're gonna finish with Q&A. So the recording will end in 30 minutes because that's all this camera will record for YouTube. But after that, um, I'll kind of face the camera and do my best to answer any questions and engage with anyone that's tuning in. And if you are tuning in, thank you. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. So. Uh, I've been feeling a bit anxious lately because of this current situation and uh, like I said, the, the way that I deal with anxiety is to better understand it, to try and avoid triggers and to use anchors to bring me back into the present. So I wanna share some of those things. Let's start by talking about anxiety. So anxiety, you know, Wikipedia's got some good definitions. Um, it's an unpleasant state of inner turmoil, unpleasant feelings or dread over anticipated events. I think a big word there is anticipated, which essentially means that it's an inner stress created by something that hasn't yet happened that you think might happen in the future. So anxiety happens in the future. It's worrying about something in future, and that's why bringing things, using tools to bring you back into the present can be really powerful to combat anxiety. So. Like I said, it's normal to be anxious right now. It would be weird if you weren't anxious, so it's okay. Uh, fear is adaptive. It's healthy, it helps us to survive by learning what we should have, uh, or what we should and shouldn't be doing, right? Um, it comes from our primitive brain, which has been conserved over a long period of time, so fear is very adaptive. It's a good thing to have. Um, but on top of that primitive brain, we've evolved something called a prefrontal cortex. And this is involved in thinking and planning, and this is essentially where anxiety lives. So anxiety is, when, is what happens when you combine fear, which is not a bad thing, with uncertainty. And then that's what creates anxiety, right? So, so planning is kind of the way that we naturally reduce anxiety um, because it creates certainty. If you plan, you can at least feel good knowing that there's something in place to reduce the uncertainty. And the way we plan is by thinking of previous scenarios and then simulating potential future um, situations based on our previous experience. Now the problem right now is that we don't have any previous experience, right? Like this is completely uncharted territory. I've definitely never lived through a global pandemic, but right? we've had small outbreaks like like SARS, but nothing that's affected the world in this profound of a way and essentially everyone being affected. So I think um, part, part of the reason that there's massive anxiety is because there is no previous scenarios that we can use to compare it to. We can't say, oh, we had one of these 20 years ago and everything turned out okay and I was fine, so it's gonna be okay. We don't have that. We don't know what's gonna happen and we have to be comfortable with that uncertainty. So anxiety isn't helpful because it actually suppresses your prefrontal cortex, which is how you rationally make decisions. Um, and so, you know, the moral there is fear is healthy, anxiety isn't. So how do we buffer against that anxiety? And we're gonna talk about um, identifying and protecting yourself against anxiety triggers in a little bit. But what we're gonna talk about now is building a resilient mind because I think this is very connected and this is a very relevant conversation because we all, we all know that mental health is much bigger in terms of public awareness. Just gonna get a drink. Mental health is in the forefront. It's got much more awareness now. Um, you know, and in our seminar, we talk about how the quality, the quality of your mind essentially determines the quality of your, of your life, right? All of your emotions, your perceptions, your moods, uh, and a lot of how you feel physically actually come from your mind. So if your mind is out of control, your life is out of control and your health is out of control. And so building a resilient mind, um, number one, it requires practice. And one of the simplest tools is meditation. And the thing with practice, practice really means repeating a behavior on a regular basis in order to get better at it. And 
I think even though meditation is really simple, right? You just sit down, shut up, don't have your phone on you and just like observe your thoughts, observe what happens or what your brain thinks of, which at the start doesn't mean a whole lot, but the more you do it, the better you get and the more you understand how your mind works and it requires practice. That's why it's called a practice. Um, and the analogy I like to think of is that your mind is kind of like a little sailboat um, and it's in it's sitting in an ocean and if you never train your mind it's kind of like being in a little sailboat in a big ocean with no rudder and no anchor and what that means is that when a storm comes you just get thrashed right you have no control over the direction of your boat you have no control over the thoughts that happen in your mind and it can be out of control um, and the other part of that too is if someone drives by you in that boat and you have no rudder no anchor well, your boat get thra gets thrashed as well. And the example there in real life is, you know, if your mind is out of control and you've never trained your mind, um, then someone can throw shit your way. Like, you know, you can have an argument at work or with your spouse or you can lose your job. And, you know, if that other person that's inflicting that kind of um, uncertainty or chaos on you is like another boat driving by and creating waves. And if you don't have a rudder in your boat and you don't have an anchor, then your boat's gonna get crushed. Right? It's going to be really hard to get it feel under control. And so having a daily mental training practice is kind of like building a rudder or having an anchor on your boat so that when a storm comes, you can drop the anchor and stabilize things so it's not as crazy. Or when someone drives by you and creates waves, you can have your rudder steer back on track. Even if you get hit off, off track a little bit, you know, whether it's a storm or someone else creating waves, um, having strategies like an anchor to drop to kind of stabilize your boat or like a rudder to keep you on track and give you some sense of direction, very very, very powerful, okay? And here's the thing. It takes time to build that rudder. It takes time to learn how to use those anchors. And so you don't wanna wait until a storm comes or until a bunch of people are driving by creating waves in order to build that rudder. Because at that point, it gets, it's really hard to weather a storm and build a rudder at the same time. It's not impossible. But you know, the, I think the problem with society right now, or the medical system even, or just public awareness is that um, we shouldn't be waiting until anxiety gets out of control in order to work on our mental health, right? We shouldn't be waiting until we have a mental health problem to build a resilient mind. Um, and so just, you know, if you take anything from this, it's maybe just try building a daily practice. And literally the way I started was one minute, 60 seconds of breathing. And I did five seconds in, five seconds out. So I took six breaths in one minute. That's how I started. And guess what? That was hard as shit to keep up and remember to do and find it to be something that's important. And now I do 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the evening of a guided meditation with Sam Harris's waking up app. Uh, I get no benefit in meditation mentioning that, I just find it really powerful. And, um, and I know that it doesn't cost very much. Um, and in fact, right now, if you email him and say why you can't afford it, I think you actually can get it for free, but whatever it takes, I just found that a really powerful tool to keep me accountable and do, um, and actually show up and do it every day. Cause that's, that's how you determine whether you're making progress in your meditation practice is whether or not you're actually able to keep up the practice every day. It's a pretty simple metric. So that's building a resilient mind. Do it when there's not a storm so that you're ready for the storm. Use this current situation as an opportunity to, to begin a mental health practice, to begin maintaining your mental health every day. And uh, when you have that anchor or the, that rudder in place, it's really easy to weather the storm. Okay, so let's. next thing I wanna talk about is protecting yourself from social contagion. Okay, so one of the major things that our brains haven't really adapted to yet even without all the shit going on. Um, and something that seems to be cranking up this kind of systemic anxiety is social media. Um, and you know, like containing a, f a physical virus, the coronavirus is pretty straightforward, right? You isolate yourself, you take precautions with physical contact, and you can do a pretty good job at isolating that virus or eliminating your exposure to that virus. And the problem is that containing a social virus, which is like fear and panic at disproportionate levels, is a lot harder to contain. And you know, social contagion is kind of like um, passing, it's the passing of emotion or affect um, from one person to another. And you know, just like you can sneeze and you can pass on a physical virus, 
when you put out a post on social media or you do some sort of act like taking all the toilet paper off a shelf, you're essentially doing a proverbial sneeze of social contagion on other people and it's super, super contagious. So, you know, I think that the social contagion of fear and panic is actually a bigger problem to deal with than the physical virus itself. So we gotta watch out for that. And you know, the toilet paper thing is a prime example. Like coronavirus doesn't make you shit yourself. So there's no reason that you need nine months worth of toilet paper. There's not a problem with toilet paper supply chains, but when you post a picture of toilet paper missing from the shelves, and then someone sees that and goes and buys way more toilet paper than usual, they essentially set this domino in motion where now everyone is panicking, not because there's a problem with the supply of toilet paper, but because there's a problem with the panic and, and the panic ends up being contagious. So we just have to really be careful that um, number one, that we're not exposing yourself to social contagion, and number two, that we're not spreading it. So how do you protect yourself from it? Limit your exposure. I took two days off from all news and social media apart from things that I was posting, and I felt so amazing. It was crazy how much of a difference I felt in terms of levels of anxiety or just ease and calmness by just eliminating all of the crap that's being put out in the media. And not all of it's crap, but you know what? Every two days, things completely change in terms of our situation. And I think for the average everyday person, what you need to know is not what's going on in the world every single second of every day. It's You just don't need to know that because it's different two days later anyway. So say, take some time off of the news, You know, turn the TV off, don't engage with social media that's giving you unhealthy feelings and it can be really, really powerful. And if you are gonna engage with the media, like news or social media, um, curate your inputs, right? Follow people that are talking about good things, uh, about thing good, like, Chaos and crisis brings really bad stuff out of people, really good stuff out of people. Find people that are talking about the good stuff because it's out there if you look for it. Okay, so curate your inputs and make sure you're not spreading it. Don't feed into the social chaos um, because a lot of times, even when the physical virus holds steady, the social chaos can do crazy things. So just make sure you're not playing a role in spreading it. Uh, let's talk about protecting from anxiety triggers. So. The first thing you need to do to protect yourself against anxiety triggers is actually be aware of what those triggers are. And a really powerful tool that I've found helpful and I've heard from other people is journaling. So write down when you become anxious um, and also write down what happened right before that. Because sometimes when you're in it and you're just feeling anxious, it's really hard to know what's causing it. But if you record it and then you go back and you read through kind of that documentation of instances where you were anxious and what preceded it, um, it can be really, it can be a lot easier to detect what the triggers are and, and connect the dots. So that can be really powerful. Uh, so improve your ability to detect triggers when they arise. So reconnect with the internal feeling. Oh, I feel kind of weird right now. I feel this low level of uncomfortableness, uh, of worry. And so just reflecting on, I wonder why I'm feeling that. Oh, it's because I just spoke to this person and that person makes me anxious when we talk. So find the connections. And once you know what the triggers are, then you can limit your exposure, right? You can protect yourself by better understanding what they are and either change your relationship with that trigger, right? So if something's giving you anxiety, when in reality you're like, that really shouldn't make me anxious. You have to rationalize that and then you remove that as a trigger. Or if you always interact with someone that you get anxious with every time and you can't change how you interact with that person, limit your exposure to that person or to that social media profile or to that news channel, right? So identify the triggers and then limit your exposure or change your perception of that trigger to reduce how much it creates anxiety in you. Okay, so that's about protect, detecting and protecting from anxiety triggers. Uh, last section, and then we're gonna open up Q&A, and the last section is anchors that can get you back into your body and out of your mind. Okay, so when you're stuck in your mind, you're stuck with all these thoughts flying around, it seems like the world is falling apart, that is happening in your mind. Right, And so getting back into the body, into the physical present moment can be a really powerful tool to break that um, kind of vicious cycle. Okay, so some of my favorite anchors, which are really just ways to ground yourself in the present experience, um, you know, that help lock me into the present. Because like we talked about, fear and uncertainty and uncertainty over the future is what creates anxiety. So you can't be anxious and worrying about the future, but also be locked into the present moment at the same time. They're mutually exclusive. So when you bring yourself into the present fully in terms of your mind, um, you can't be anxious, right? And the goal is to 
train your ability to flip that switch and get into the present so that the, you have this anchor so that when the storm gets really heavy and your boat's getting thrashed around, drop the anchor and your boat stabilizes. And then it gives you this sense of calm, right? And inner calmness inside your mind. So one of them is breath. Now, when you say take a deep breath, most people don't really know what that means. And on a recent podcast that I heard, um, they talked about this thing called five finger breathing. And it was about tracing fingers, but the way they talked about it, I visualized it in a different way so let's all try this right now it's literally gonna take 30 seconds but let's all try this you got five fingers let's start with the pinky what you're gonna do is you're gonna trace from your belly button all the way up to your sternum and as you do that you're gonna breathe in pause for a second and then you're gonna breathe out and then you're gonna go from your pinky finger to your ring finger then middle index and thumb so let's just do this right now so sit down or stand up pinky finger on your belly button and then just breathe in breathe out Ring finger, breathe in, and breathe out. Middle finger, breathe in, you can close or open your eyes, and breathe out. Index finger, and breathe out. Last one with your thumb, trace up. And breathe out. So, when you're feeling really anxious, something as simple as that, tracing up and down your belly. Now the thing that's happening there is you're, you're thinking about your breath, you're activating all these tactile sensors on your stomach and in your fingers. You're thinking of which finger you're using. You're keeping track of where, where you're at so that you know the next finger. All of these things that are essentially in your immediate awareness, you only have a certain amount of immediate awareness available, right? Like RAM, random access memory. You only have a certain amount. If you fill that random access current state memory or current state awareness rather with a bunch of different things, you essentially don't allow space for anxiety or future concern. Very, very powerful. And it might not seem very tangible, but if you do it and and you work on it and you practice it, and practice requires regular exposure. You gotta do it often. Um, it can be super powerful, okay? Some other anchors, go in for a walk in nature. Leave your phone at home, go for a walk in nature. Observe, look at the trees, look at the birds, look at the sky, breathe, pick up some snow. I'm telling you, that I w if someone told me this two years ago, I would've been like, you're crazy, this is nonsense, but I believe it now because I've experienced it. So just be open-minded enough to try it and prove to yourself that it can help. Okay? If you're not open-minded that it can help, I can guarantee you it won't help. But if you are and you try it and you believe that it can help to bring you into the present moment and reduce this sense of anxiety, it can be very powerful. Uh, another anchor, beam session. I talk about beam, I don't talk about beams to sell them. I talk about, I, I sell beams because I believe in them. Um, and I say I, you know, TFC started making these beams because we were getting requests and we just are constantly trying to think of better ways to articulate how powerful these can be as a tool. And literally it can just be go out, buy a piece of wood, piece of uh, lumber and use that. That is a beam. I'm not talking about just TFC beams, but the beautiful thing about a beam and, and it kind of ties into play. When you're playing, you're in the moment, you're experiencing joy through movement or through playing with someone else. So beam is kind of a form of play, but when you're on the beam, the good thing is it gives you a form of feedback, which is is if your mind wanders and you think of other things, AKA things in the future or, or the uncertainty of, the, of, of where things are going, you fall off the beam. When you're completely engaged in the present moment thinking of what you're doing and just focusing on not falling off the beam, you're in the present. So that's why standing on something that is challenging, whether it's a tube of metal, a piece of wood, a two by four, or anything, even just one foot with your eyes closed, you're in the present if you're actually putting all of your attentional density on the task at hand. Very powerful. And the last one I had written here was uh, cold exposure. So when you go into cold, uh, really, really cold water, whether that's immersing yourself completely or just taking a cold shower, you have no choice but to really think about your breath and being calm so that you don't freak out. So you can't really, I mean, you know, I said that to someone once and they're like, well, literally being cold gives me anxiety. And it's like, well, why does it give you anxiety? And they thought it would harm them. And when they realize that it's not gonna harm them, it's not posing a physical danger, then they were able to calm that down. So cold exposure,
exposure, beam session, or any kind of playful movement experience, going for a walk in nature, doing that five finger breath thing, those are just anchors to bring you into the present moment. So a couple uh, last few things, um, daily strategies to reduce your anxiety. I think one of them is prioritize and schedule time to connect with others. So this can be a phone call, um, this can be connecting in person with someone in your family, right? Um, like you can be in the same home as your family, but not actually connect with them, right? Like being in the same physical space does not mean you're connecting, right? Connecting means put your phones away, turn the TV off, eliminate all distractions, and give your full attention to connect with someone in a conversation or um, through an activity in a very deeply nourishing way. And that can be a powerful buffer against anxiety. Um, and yeah, so I mean, I hope that stuff is of value and it's just, it's just me sharing my experience, right? Um, this isn't me preaching that I know the truth, I don't. In fact, I, I am trying to learn every single day and figure my own shit out. But you know, if my experience and the research I've done can help other people by just suggesting things to try, uh, I think it can be very powerful. So a couple of the resources that I used uh, to just kind of get some of this info, um, one of them was recent, it's called the Feel Better, Live More podcast with uh, Rangan Chatterjee insanely powerful podcast. If you want to fill your brain with some serious brain candy when it comes to health or hearing experts talk about really relevant topics, really good podcast. And he recently had Dr. Judson Brewer on the podcast who's a uh, psychiatrist. He's also a cognitive uh, or a behavioral neuro neuroscientist. Uh, and he's written a really good book too, which I just bought called The Craving Mind. I haven't read it yet, but when it arrives, I will. Um, but they talked about all this stuff and probably way more crisply than, than I did today. So have a listen to that. Um, um, and actually on that podcast, they talk about an app called Unwinding Anxiety. And I think this is, you know, this situation we're in right now is gonna be a powerful force to um, essentially scale up digital health, right? So like an app, and they're actually getting better results than prescription medication to treat anxiety with an app that behaviorally explains where anxiety comes from and gives you little anchors, like little breath drills to do when you're feeling anxious. It's insanely powerful. I downloaded it, it's free. You can't get full access to everything, but if you um, struggle with anxiety or it's something that's on your radar or someone that you love or know struggles with it, get them to download the Unwinding Anxiety app. Uh, I think it's it's free, it's available in the App Store. I don't get anything for, for saying this, but I just think it was really powerful. Anyway, I'm gonna open it up to Q&A now. This Recording will end in about a minute, uh, two minutes, 20 seconds, so you might catch the start of Q&A. Um, but thanks for tuning in. I hope the information was valuable to you. I've been getting good feedback from people about these uh, live sessions posted to YouTube, so I'm gonna keep doing them as long as people say that it's giving them value and helping them. And uh, I think it's good for me to just clarify topics that are going through my brain. And I haven't done a whole lot of community interaction stuff with the TFC community, but I will now. And this isn't just a transient thing. We're gonna do a lot more of this. And uh, thanks for tuning in and uh, you know, much love. Have a great rest of your day. All right, folks, let's do it. So I'm gonna try and rapid fire answers to questions. Um, if I can't answer the question, I just will say I don't know, but I'll do the best I can. Hope we come to North of England. We do the UK every year in November. Hopefully this November we can do it as well. What app? Unwinding Anxiety, Waking Up, and TFC app are the three apps I mentioned. Uh, yeah, Unwinding Anxiety, powerful, powerful app. I think that's, gonna, that's the future of treating mental health problems or building mental health resilience to avoid problems is apps. I really think, I really believe that. There's, well, the science is showing that that's the truth. So when you get better results um, than prescription medications or cognitive behavioral therapy from an app that someone can use for free on their phone, uh, like you're doing some shit that's gonna be powerful. Would you mind reminding us of the name of that podcast? So the podcast is called Feel Better Live More. It's by Rangan Chatterjee. It's available, if you look up Feel Better Live More on uh, the Apple App Store, it'll come up. And the most recent podcast was the one with Judd Brewer. Super powerful. Basic exercise to realign feet and arches. It's not about the exercises. It's about what you expose your body to every single day, right? So. The biggest contributor to your foot health is the footwear you wear. I say this all the time, but um, that is the truth as far as I've kind of come to realize it. So 
Um, when it comes to the arch of the foot, your hip has a massive bearing on the ability of your foot to organize itself. So I would, you know, immediate things, eliminate and reduce the amount of sitting you do and go to the floor. Sit on the floor, whether you're working, reading, relaxing, uh, that alone will help a shitload. You're welcome. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Appreciate the love. I hope that was of value. I know there's a lot of people doing Instagram lives, a lot of amazing stuff. So I don't know if, um, you know, I hope this is a value to people and we appreciate all the questions and people coming and, you know, your attention's precious and I don't want to waste it. So I want to make sure that I'm actually able to contribute in some positive way and hopefully it benefits you. How many of CAI are genuine? Don't know what CAI is. And I probably wouldn't know how to answer that question anyway. Can you name the book 